Hi, welcome to Rock Down. I'm Wendy Stapleton. Well, truly one of the finest musicians to ever grace our shores. Musician, composer, singer, and a star in his own right. He's played with John Farnham, Olivia Newton, John. But uh, we're here to find out much, much more today. Would you please welcome Mr. Joe Creighton? Hi, Wendy. Thank you for that welcome. I've actually got a bit red in the cheeks from us. Have you blushed? So, started to blush a little. But it's true. <laughs> you are truly one of the finest musicians. And the reason I said to grace our shores and stayed was because, of course, you were born... I'm in a foreigner. <laughs> Still? <laughs> after how many years? After, oh, well, I came in 1967. I think... The first time I came. Yep. With my parents. So tell us about your life. You, you were born in Belfast? Yes, I was born in Belfast, and I grew up in a little town just outside of, of Belfast called Bangor, about 13 miles from Belfast. And uh, it's... It's a like, sort of a seaside community, so it's actually a very nice place to grow up. What was it like, though? Um, I, I read that you... Was it Sandy... Sandy Road? Sandy Road. That's Ro where I was born, the Sandy Road. That sounded interesting. Was that it right was, in Belfast? That's in the, the heart of Loyalist Ulster, you could say. Can you explain what that is, like loyal, okay, Loyalist? Okay, Loyalist Ulster in, in Northern Ireland, at that time, it's changed now, but... Uh, Northern Ireland used to be 75% Protestant and 25% Catholic. Which bit so did you fit into? The <laughs> no, but the, I, was, I grew up in the Protestant side of things, you know, although my, my birth father actually is a Catholic from Dublin, so I actually run with the blood of both in my veins. But I grew up um, in a street called Sandy Row, which is right... The Sandy Row, Shankill, and Shankill Road, you know, and those are the... That was the, the heart fierce, of the, the whole... The fierce, uh, you know, sort of loyal to the Queen. How difficult was it living in Belfast to access, um, say, all of the music that was coming, say, at that time into, into the UK from America? And very easy. It was a very... Uh, Belfast was a very rich place to, to grow up in for music because there were a lot of great bands. Of course, you know, I, I was a big fan of Van Morrison and them. Yes. And yeah. We used to always go down from Bangor down to Belfast and, and watch them perform and sometimes you know them would come and play and our local kind of gigs as well. Tell us about your early days in bands before you came out to Australia. Uh, well, well I played in uh, in the band The A-Side. We, we played with actually quite a lot of famous bands. We you know supported the Trogs and Dave D. Dozy Beaky Mick and Titch and things and we were actually sort of quite up and coming never to the point of a record a record deal or anything like that. And then I left shortly afterwards to come to Australia. And Sydney in 67, now don't get me wrong, I love Australia. It's, a, it's my home and I love it. But in 67, it was a scary place because it was so culturally different to what I'd come from. And detached still. Yeah. Because of that great, yes, um, you know, I think here we used to wait for a year. That's right. To, to listen yeah. to stuff that had already been played all over the world. That's and, right. and we were a year, year behind. That's right. A lot of the music was extremely pop based too, mm -hmm. which I was so anti pop music as far as, you know, uh, all the sort of fluffy pop was. But that seemed to be the only thing that was happening. Yeah. As far as I could see, I know now actually there was a lot of other stuff going on, but it but wasn't. It was underneath. Yes, it was very much underground. I remember walking down George Street. Two things that struck me actually <laughs> was that. Uh, Men walking, you know, with a, a Kruber hat and the short pants and the long socks. And I'm just like, wow, I've never seen anybody look like that. That you know? only happens in Sydney. Oh, well, it must be. Uh, uh, I'm only joking. joking. <laughs> I'm only joking, just to get a little bit of the old rivalry uh, going in. But, well, Sydney was very much. And then I remember going into, uh, I think it was the Tattersalls Hotel in George Street and having a beer. And it nearly went through my roof. I couldn't believe how cold it was. Ah, you know, chilled yes. glasses and chilled beer. Icing of course, I was thirsty. And I'm going, yeah. wow, you know, I got the brain freeze and meat. And I'm like, I'd never had a beer that cold. Old, you know, <laughs> so it was culture shock. And that's, so, did you have siblings? No, I'm an only child. Okay, so when you arrived, what did you do? Well, I got a job because uh, my father had taken me out of school because uh, I was spending too much time with, uh, as he thought, the wrong type of people playing music. And uh, I went to grammar school and didn't, you know, I failed in my last year. Didn't do your grammar. I didn't do it yeah, properly, yeah, yeah. you know. And it was a kind of a poshy school too, you know. So it was I won a scholarship to it, and I had done quite well up to this certain point, and then I started to, you know, not be interested in it. So where did you find the wrong people to hang out with? <laughs> At, the At the grammar school. 
<laughs> I was just thinking <laughs> that. Bang, where do you find the wrong? Where do you find the wrong people to hang yeah. out with at no. grammar school? Well, when he says there were, uh, you know, it was just that we were no, all in growing our hair long. I know what you're saying. And yeah. we're all, you know, yeah. we're all middle class. We're all middle class kids, you know, mostly. And it was just that we looked a bit different. Different, you know. But um, where was I? You well, your father made you. Get a oh, job. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, I had to get a job. I, mean, I, had, I had actually gotten a job in a business that he was involved in in, in Northern Ireland before we left. And um, he was trying to groom me in trainee management, which was, of course, all wrong. You know what I mean? It was just I'm so not management material, you yeah. know? <laughs> here I am nodding out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and anyway, so I came here and I just got a job. And um, then I started applying to try and get some bands. I started just playing with some local bands. And finally, I hooked up with a band called Melissa in Sydney, who were actually up and coming, quite well known. And they played sort of kind of prog rock. And I introduced them to the band Morrison, and we, I wrote a few songs with them and stuff. And we did an album called Midnight Trampoline. And apparently, it's, it's gotten, uh, there's a lot of young guys who are doing prog rock that really know the band Melissa. Is that uh, right? Yeah. And I was at a party with, you know Stuart Fraser? Yes, I do. Oh, nice to you. And Stuart says, I bet you, and he was talking about his brother's two sons that right into all this prog rock and everything, and he said, I bet you they know the band you were in. I said, no way. He called them over to them. He said, what's the band you're in, John? Said, Melissa, oh yeah, and they could tell me the songs on the album. Then I went travelling for a long time. Yeah. Tell I us went, about that. I went back to London and stayed there for a while. I didn't play music much in London, then I went to... Um, I got involved with uh, the Guru, you know, and I had to go yes, to India. Yes, Guru Maharaji. Yeah, yeah, I had to go to Can India. you just tell us a little bit about that? Um, when you left Australia to go back to London... Yeah, that's when I got involved with it. In your heart of hearts, really, <laughs> you're sort of going back I to see... I was going home, man. You were going I home, wanted, yeah. I, I, I wanted, wanted to ask like that. So. You'd had enough of here. <laughs> Mind you, travelling travel in the back of a transit van up and down uh, the, 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 the west coast of Ireland in freezing cold and slithering all over icy roads, I started to think... Maybe Australia's not that bad a place yeah. after all, you know? Well, anyway, so I, getting back to London, I went to go to his ashram in India, and the Indo-Pakistan war broke out, so I was stuck in Kabul. Oh, lovely. Mm. So we stayed there for a couple of months, and we couldn't, and I didn't want to go back to London again because we were running out of money. And someone said, look, why don't you go to Japan? You can make money playing music and teaching English and stuff. like that. It's a good thing to do. So we went up into Russia and across Siberia, and landed in Yokohama. That was your only way out? Yep. And landed in Yokohama with $100 and just started to make a life there. Stayed there for about two years. Two years? That's yeah. a very long time. Yeah. And um, we used to just drive into Tokyo a couple times a week and do jingles. And I would sing jingles in Japanese. So it was a bit of a, a quirky thing. Fantastic. Milk what a ads thing. and things like that. Two I just years still in remember Japan. them. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll, we'll take a short break. When okay. we come back, did you come back to Australia after that? Yes. When we come back, we'll talk about coming back to Australia. Rock down. 